30 years ago this weekend, the Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law. It marked a major turning point for the rights and opportunities for people with disabilities by banning discrimination in the workplace, schools, and areas of public life. But three decades after the law's passage, individuals with disabilities still face significant barriers to equality. Joining me to discuss is Anna Landry, a 21-year-old college student and disabilities activist who is still personally waging the battle. Anna, this is a landmark law that really has been a birthright for you at 21 years old, but are there still gaps? Absolutely, there are. So I've faced a lot of difficulties in terms of physical accessibility, with the, which the ADA is most well known for covering. Um, I still can't take it for granted that as a wheelchair user, I'll be able to get into certain buildings, that I'll be able to go out to dinner with my friends or do activities with my family in certain spaces. So in terms of physical accessibility, enforcement, implementation of the principles laid out in the ADA, there is a long way to go. And then on other issues like disability services, personal assistance and healthcare at home, I faced a ton of challenges in getting the services that I need to just go about my day, to have someone to help me get out of bed in the morning, to get dressed and do basic daily activities. There's still a lot of ways in which these services, which a lot of them don't even fall under the ADA, are not provided. So there's a lot of gaps that we still have to fill. How much do you think this coronavirus um, is playing into issues with, with that equity. I mean, I looked very quickly just at unemployment numbers. For adults without disabilities, it was around 11% for June of this year. Adults with disabilities, it was almost 17%. Yeah, so the disability unemployment rate has been much higher than the non-disabled unemployment rate for a long, long time. That's partially because of the lack of services available for people to be able to thrive in a career. Things like personal assistance at home, issues with places of employment providing the accommodations that under the ADA they are supposed to provide. And now during coronavirus, most disabled people are more at risk than non-disabled people for COVID. So not coming into work is sometimes a choice of life or death. People have had to quit their jobs or be laid off in order to stay safe. And there's been issues, too, with people getting their services. There's been a lot of interruption in those services. Finally, I think issues of medical rationing have been huge. In many states, including in New Jersey, we've had issues where disabled people are discriminated against in getting treatment for COVID. A lot of people have these stereotypes in their head that we have a lower quality of life, that we're less worth saving, less worth giving treatment to. So that's been a really huge equality issue, even though in theory, it should be prevented by the ADA. I mean, I guess my question for you is, I think back to when this law was signed and the president, uh, President Bush at the time called it a bright new era. Um, where do you see us heading in the next 30 years or where do you hope when we check in with you in three decades will be? So I think we really need a more holistic understanding of what disability is. It's more than just adding a ramp here or there. It's a lot of changing social expectations and social stigma and increasing our idea of who the disability community is. When the ADA was passed, unfortunately, the disability movement was largely white, affluent, physically disabled men. So because of that, you have definitions of disability and expectations about disability that are really limited. We need to make sure that future legislation and the disability movement itself is becoming more inclusive, especially of people of color, who, as we know, during COVID are far more at risk due to a large number of, of just issues of discrimination and healthcare disparities. So overall, the movement needs to be more inclusive, which will then in turn hopefully make future legislation a lot more inclusive and also of non-physical disabilities. People with intellectual and sensory disabilities are also a lot of times left out. Anna Landry, great to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Brianna.